So here we have, uh, we're trying to award a scholarship to one of four students, Anna, Brian, Carlos, and Dimitri. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and use uh, Copeland's method here. So if we do that, we can make our comparisons, right? We're going to compare uh, A versus B, A versus C, A versus D, uh, B versus C, C, uh, B versus D, uh, and finally C versus D. So let's see if we can do this real quick. So A versus B, it looks like, um, oops, it looks like, uh, we got 10 to 10, uh, and so that's a tie. So we've got A is a half, B is a half now. Uh, for A versus C, we've got, let's see, A, A, C, A. So it looks like 14 to 6, uh, that one's going to A. So 14 to 6, that one's going to A. Uh, next we got A versus D. So we've got D, A, D, D, and it sure looks like D is going to win there. So D gets one uh, point there, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, just skip, let me just quickly go through this here. So here, uh, D ends up getting the point, here C gets the point, here B gets the point, and here uh, C ends up getting the point. So it turns out that in the end, uh, it turns out that A here gets uh, one and a half points, B gets one and a half points, C gets two points, uh, and D only gets one point, and so C wins the scholarship. Now, we're going to see uh, now a, a slight problem with the Copeland's method. So it turns out that Dimitri wasn't actually eligible for this, uh, for this, uh, for this scholarship. And so we're going to have to eliminate Dimitri from our, from our set of choices. So we're just going to take Dimitri out, and, and rerun the election with just these three candidates. So now we've got A versus B, uh, A versus C, and B versus C. So comparing A to B, we've got A, A, B, B is 10 to 10 is tied. Uh, so A and B both get half a point. Sounds familiar. Uh, and then let's see, next up we've got a versus C, we got A, A, C, A. It looks like A is going to win that one with uh, 14 to 6. Uh, so A gets a point. Uh, and then next we've got uh, B versus C. So we got C, 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 B. Uh, and it looks like we've got a 16 uh, to 4, uh, oops, 16 to 4 in favor of C there. So C gets so he gets one point. Uh, and when we total up all of our points now, something bad has happened. Uh, it turns out that even though D was not the winner, by eliminating D, we've had a change. Now A wins. And that seems a little weird. Uh, so the idea here is, is something called independence of irrelevant alternatives. Uh, which I'll attempt to write here, independence of irrelevant alternatives. And the idea behind this is, is just that, you know, if some, if a choice that was not a winning choice is removed from the election, it doesn't seem like it should change the winner of the election. Uh, and, and when it does, we call it a violation of the independence of irrelevant alternatives criterion. Um, a great example of this, uh, Criterion is the idea that, you know, if, if a waitress comes and says, hey, do you want apple pie or blueberry pie? And you say, I'd like the apple pie. And somebody comes, they, she comes back later and says, oh, you know, we also have chocolate cake. And he says, oh, never mind, I'll have the blueberry pie then. It's like, why should that irrelevant alternative change the outcome of the decision? That's the, the, the fairness issue uh, with independence of irrelevant alternatives.